All right. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from here today. We're excited to have you and thank you so much for taking time out of your evening um, to join and learn a little bit more about uh, our institutions here tonight. So just a few housekeeping things before we get started here tonight. I just wanted to remind you of the Q&A feature. So asking questions is super important in your college search and we encourage you to ask those questions. You can utilize the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen to ask any individual uh, representatives any questions that you might have and they can chat back with you uh, directly utilizing that function. So you won't be able to unmute yourself and ask them verbally, but you can utilize that box at any time throughout the next 45 minutes. Just a reminder that there are more sessions tonight and tomorrow. So we encourage you to register for any of those sessions that might interest you. And the recording will be available of tonight's session for you in about a week or so on the StriveScan uh, website where you registered for tonight's event. If you want to go back and look at any uh, materials or contact information or anything like that, that'll be available for you to view uh, moving forward. And without further ado, I will turn it over to our first presenter and she will kick us off for tonight and I will pass over the screen share to you. Hello, uh, my name is Lauren and I am here representing Minnesota State University Mankato. I'm going to share my screen here and we'll get started with a quick overview. Um, so uh, Minnesota State University Mankato for a point of reference is about 85 miles south of the Twin Cities. So for those living there, a good, um, an easy day trip away uh, as an institution. We were founded in 1868, meaning we have been around for over 150 years. So we started out as a school for just 27 students. Um, today have close to 15,000 students and offer over 130 undergraduate programs. Um, we do have about a 20 to 1 average faculty to student ratio and a 93% job placement rate. Um, some other, and that is measured within one year of graduation. Um, uh, another notable thing about our institution is we are a national leader in undergraduate research, which is a really great opportunity, especially for those considering um, some uh, postgraduate work. Uh, and then finally, we do have over 200 recognized student organizations, um, ranging from intramural sports, faith-based cultural groups, um, anime club, cloud watching society, really um, a way for everybody to find their, their niche with us. Um, just an overview of some of our top programs of study here. Our top majors are biology, nursing, psychology, uh, business management and elementary education, um, but we also have to do have some unique majors that we're known for. Um, we are Minnesota's only four year aviation program. Our construction management um, is one of the top three in the nation. Our sports management is one of the oldest programs in the Midwest. Um, we have a growing dental hygiene and a new clinical uh, sciences building to go with that. And our theater program is in the top 1% of uh, ticket sales in the nation. Um, and then, of course, we do recognize that um, student success takes place both inside and outside of the classroom. So we do have a number of university services available to our students. On the academic side, um, we do have our academic advising center, our, our center for academic success, um, which includes uh, tutoring resources, writing workshops, um, really anything you need to be successful in the classroom. And then we also have a career development center, which is going to be your um, readiness area for that future career. Uh, someday they do um, resume building, uh, you can do a practice interviews, um, and even internships and part time jobs uh, during your college uh, time with us. I also like to highlight um, some of our diversity services. Uh, not only do we have some excellent support programs for many of our student populations. Um, we really, and this is just a few here, this is not an all inclusive list, um, but what I, I also like to share is that um, our inclusion and diversity office puts on a lot of really great programs, they bring in some great speakers and panelists and really provide a lot of great learning opportunities for all students to engage in. Um, in terms of health services, we have an on site clinic, uh, pharmacy and student um, and counseling center, as well as uh, dental services available, and many of activities um, to get you involved and stay active uh, during your time with us. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, over 200 recognized student organizations uh, in terms of athletics, our hockey is division one um, and then division two for all of our other sports. 
um, being uh, the university is very much a central part to our community, so it's very easy to get involved. We're a regional hub um, for healthcare, uh, as well as uh, many other employment and internships uh, opportunities in the area. Um, applying for admission is pretty straightforward. We do have what are called automatic admission requirements. So that means if you meet any one of these top three items here, you are automatically admitted. So those are top 50% of your high school class. Cumulative GPA of at least a 3.0. Um, you see there are some minimum uh, ACT guidelines there. And then at least a 21 composite ACT score um, with, a, with a satisfactory GPA. Now I will say we are test optional through fall of 2022. Um, if you're looking at a future date, check back with us. The application process is online. We do have free application month the entire month of March. So it's a great time to get that done. Um, so you're gonna complete your application and then work with your high school office to get us those. Let's see, um, here's a quick overview of our tuition here. We have our, um, we do have banded tuition here. So anything between 12 and 18 credits um, plus student fees is gonna be this cost for you here. When we factor in an average room and board, we get you this total as well. We do uh, work with the Raise Me scholarship platform, and then we also do have our own scholarship finder with a lot of great opportunities available for students. Um, this is more for our incoming uh, first year students, and then um, we encourage all our students to check back on this regularly as new scholarships are added all the time. Um, and really that it, I think I'm getting right to my last minute here. So that's kind of an overview of what I have. If you have any questions or would like to um, learn more, please feel free to reach out to me directly. I will put my email in the chat box. Um, otherwise, if you reach out to our general admissions department, um, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, and otherwise I will be also available in the chat box for questions. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. And we will uh, pass it over uh, to Whitney at Northland College. Hi, everybody. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm Whitney, I am the Director of Admissions at Northland College. We are a small private four-year institution in Ashland, Wisconsin. What you can see on the map here, right at the top of that orange arrow is where Ashland, Wisconsin is. We're about an hour east of Duluth or three and a half hours from the Twin Cities, right on the Shawamigan Bay of Lake Superior. You can see our campus in the foreground here. Um, but then between us and the lake, we have the small town of Ashland where we're located. It's about 8,200 people, and it's just a few minutes walk down to the lake shore. Community is a big aspect of the Northland experience, both the campus community and the greater community that we are a part of. Because we are a genuinely small school, we only have 600 students with an average class size of just 15. You get to know your classmates and your professors on a very personal level, and you feel like you are at your home away from home. Northland has a very unique perspective in that we have had an environmental mission since 1971. You can see some of the things here on the screen that help to denote our unique environmental mission, but it's interwoven into just about everything we do from our classes to our local food in the cafeteria to being recognized as a B campus in the state of Wisconsin. We have over 40 different academic programs. I will say it's okay to be undecided coming into Northland. You don't have to choose a particular school or college within Northland College to study. You have until the end of your sophomore year to find the right program for you. And every student has a personal faculty mentor and advisor that they work with every semester to explore their different interests. And our curriculum is very experiential. So you get to sort of test drive different things in your first couple of years, working through your liberal arts requirements and some of your you know, major classes, if that's something you want to dive right into. We are a division three school for athletics. We have 16 different um, D3 sports, men's and women's, and, um, a lot of different 
uh, athletes on campus. Almost 40% uh, of our students are student athletes. And of course, attending any of our athletic events for our entire campus community is free. So it's a really great way to get out and get involved with the greater community. As I mentioned before, Northland is very focused on experiential learning and hands-on learning. So even in your you know, day-to-day -day classes, you're probably going to get out and be in the outdoors, be in the greater community. Um, we are also located close to the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, and we're surrounded by about a million acres of national forest. If you like getting out into the outdoors and have fun hiking or biking or skiing, Northland might be a great fit for you extracurricularly. Um, if you're a senior this year, it's not too late to apply. We are a rolling admission school. It's free. Um, we are test optional. We have been and we will continue to be. So don't worry about that. Um, you haven't missed any scholarship or financial aid deadlines. Um, with our rolling admissions and scholarship process, once you're reviewed for admission, if you're admitted, you can earn an academic scholarship of at least $19,000 per year. And there's an opportunity to earn additional merit scholarships and grants. Um, we encourage all students to fill out the FAFSA. Just for filling out the FAFSA, you will earn at least $1,000 in work study availability at Northland if that's something you want to take advantage of. Here's some general contact information um, for Northland, but I will also throw my personal contact in the chat. Um, I do work with all first year students from Minnesota. So if you have any specific questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And we'll pass it over to Derek. Perfect. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome from the West Coast. Uh, my name is Derek Nagley, and I'm actually your admissions counselor here at Pacific University. And so at Pacific University, Oregon, we are an amazing small liberal arts university located out here in the northwest corner of Oregon. So if you want to know where we're at, we're about 25 miles west of Portland. So basically, get to Portland, keep driving towards the coast, and you'll get to where we're at. We're an amazing location being right next to, <clears throat> excuse me, a very large city hub with a million people there in Portland, being able to use mass transportation, but we're on the very outskirts of that. So an hour in the other direction is open country all the way to the Oregon coast, and you can visit three different beaches from within that one hour drive, but we're also still really close to places like Nike, Xerox, Columbia, all have world headquarters within a 15 minute drive of our campus. So where we're located is an amazing area to be able to get that best of the city, that small school, and still be able to experience the outdoors, which is a big part of coming to the Pacific Northwest. And as I mentioned at Pacific, we are that small private liberal arts university. It's one application to apply to the entire college. So there's no extra apply into a certain school, apply into a certain program. You are applying to Pacific University. We have about 18, 1,900 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate students as well. But what that means is we can offer honors type education to every single student while they're here. And that's to over 65 different majors, minors, and programs. Whether you're interested in something like the health professions, which is where we get heard about the most with pre-optometry, pre-physical therapy, pre-med, or whether you want to be part of our nationally and regionally ranked creative writing, education, and business programs, we really are that full liberal arts where you're going to be able to find what you want to study, whether you come in knowing that path or you have two full years to declare major. And at Pacific, in those small classes where the average class size is only 19 students, you're not sitting in large lecture halls. Our biggest lecture hall only seats 60 students. You get to know your professors. They know who you are. In fact, 100% of our classes are taught by full professors. No TA is doing any teaching while they're here at Pacific, but you learn from the best. And also, none of our classes are impacted. So you will be able to come into Pacific, start in your education right away, and our guarantee to you as incoming students is that you will get a four-year education here at Pacific. No fifth years, six years or victory laps, but you actually get a four-year guarantee from Pacific to come in and get that education while you're here. And along with that, in the classroom education, we want our students starting job shadowing research and internships, freshman and sophomore year of college, not waiting until you're a junior or senior. Because we know it's very, very important that we don't just let you leave with a handshake and a diploma, but that you have a resume to back that up with real world experience. And so you can see with our extremely high placement numbers into graduate schools and into jobs, 
that our students are able to use that real life experience in the labs, in the classrooms, in the workforce to be able to bounce off that and take that next step right away, again, at the end of a four year education. And at Pacific, we want that to be available to all majors again. This isn't specific to the engineering department, but any student at Pacific can be involved in that internships, grab job shadowing or research, whether you're in the sciences or whether you're wanting to sing in the choir or write your own book in the creative writing department. At the same time, we know our students also need an experience outside of the classroom. So to do that, we want you to be able to join some of our 70 different clubs and organizations ranging from student government to Greek life, academic clubs, our Hawaii club, to the performing arts, where you do not need to major or minor. If you want to perform at Pacific, you just need to try out for those groups. Or our athletic events, where we have 24 varsity NCAA Division III sports, ranging um, from cross country to women's rowing to football and basketball, 20 intramural and 10 club sports as well. So it's a very, very active campus. And our campus loves to solve problems outside of the classroom. And what that means at Pacific is taking what you're learning through those internships, through those job shouting, through the classroom work, to the real world and solving things, whether that's going into the Pacific Northwest, where you can experience maybe surfing on the Oregon coast, summiting Mount Hood, or just hiking in the Tillamook National Forest through our outdoor pursuits office and our outdoor leadership minor, or maybe studying abroad in 27 sites around the world in English and non-English speaking countries for either a semester or a year, or doing a short two to three week travel class with a professor in a foreign country, and adding into that community service. Our students love to give back. We're on the presidential list of community service colleges every year, and we're very proud of that, that our students can give back at the local level and the international level as well. We know there's so many opportunities out there for those students, so we want them to be able to spread what they're learning from Pacific. And at Pacific, again, when you apply, you're applying to Pacific as a whole. And what that means is one application through the common application. And we are still accepting applications. We're enrolling admission. So you can still apply to Pacific, use the Common App. We'll need your um, letters of recommendation, a transcript from your high school, so we can get to know you better and learn more about your academics. But you didn't hear me say test scores, because at Pacific, we are test optional for admission and for merit scholarship. You do not need uh, test scores to be able to be admitted or to be able to receive our highest merit scholarship. And at Pacific, when you're applying, there's no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships. So there's, again, no extra paperwork. You get to apply to the school and apply for all the scholarships, whether you're from Washington, Oregon, or Wisconsin. And those scholarships are things like visiting campus, being able to receive an academic merit scholarship from 15 to 27,000 a year, or a special interest award in music, dance, or theater. So this gives you so many opportunities to earn more money here at Pacific. And just so you know, about 99% of our students will receive financial aid while they're here. So you're gonna have the opportunity to afford Pacific. And for those of you wanting to learn more about the university, I will put my contact information into the chat as well, but you can also scan this barcode here or just reach out to me at DerekNPacificU.edu. Again, I'm your admissions counselor. So when you apply, I'm the guy on the other end who's gonna be working with you through the whole process. So thank you all for learning a little bit more about Oregon and I look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Awesome, and we'll Go right into our next presenter, uh, Molly. Sorry, my computer is just taking a minute to load the PowerPoint here. Okay, so my name is Molly Nelson and I am the Director of Marketing and Recruiting for Rainy River Community College. Rainy River Community College is located in International Falls, Minnesota, which is right on um, right across the border from Fort Francis, Ontario in Canada. Um, so we do get a lot of Canadian students on campus as well and a lot of students like to um, travel back and forth across the border. Obviously before COVID, it was much easier to cross back and forth. Um, we're a pretty small campus. Overall, we have about 250 students on campus. Um, so we have an 80 acre campus that's connected through heated walkways, which is um, really nice in the wintertime. You don't have to go outside to go from building to building. Um, we also have on campus housing, which I'm going to talk for, uh, um, about more further along in the presentation, and that's walking distance from campus. Um, we are a member of the Minnesota State System. Um, that includes 30 colleges and seven universities. Um, so that makes it very easy to transfer within the Minnesota State System. 
These are some fast facts about Rini. Um, so each year we award over $200,000 in academic scholarships. Um, over 90% of our students that apply for financial aid receive some form of financial aid. Um, like I mentioned, we're a pretty small campus. Um, so our um, student to faculty ratio is 21 to one. Um, this shows a breakdown of costs of tuition and fees um, for a full year. Um, so for a full year of tuition and fees, if you were to attend full time and live on campus, it would be a little over $11,000 total, which is the fraction of the cost of going to a state university or private college right away. So if you're looking to save money and complete those first two years of your general course requirements, um, it's really beneficial to consider attending a community college first. Um, so based on our most recent graduate survey, um, over 92% of our students felt like Greeny prepared them to transfer to a state university or private college. So the majority of our students get what's called an Associate of Arts degree. So that's going to meet the first two years of general course degree requirements within a four year bachelor's university level degree. We also have an Associate of Health Sciences degree. And we also have transfer pathway programs too, specifically in communication studies. English studies, um, a history transfer pathway program, as well as exercise science. Um, and then um, something that fits in nicely with the exercise science program too is the coaching and fitness specialist certificate. Um, we also have port uh, partner programs with, um, within our district with other colleges and those um, programs include addiction studies, early childhood special education, as well as a two-year practical nursing hands-on program. Um, we also have varsity level athletics. So we have men's and women's athletics. Um, so for our women's athletics, we have volleyball, basketball, and softball. And then for our men's sports, we have men's basketball and men's baseball as well. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, we do have on-campus housing. So we have fully furnished apartments. Um, so they come with a full kitchen, full bathroom, and full living room. So there are two bedrooms per apartment. Um, and it's conveniently walking distance from our campus, a less than 10 minute walk outside. Um, we do have a wide variety of student um, life clubs and activities for students to participate in. We do have a disc golf course around campus. Um, in addition to that, we have a Voyager outdoor recreation club, a student senate club, a Phi Theta Kappa club. Um, so we really encourage our students to participate in student clubs and activities on campus um, to get them outside of their dorm and meet others outside of their classes. Um, so our student services staff, like I had mentioned earlier, um, we really offer personalized high quality attention. We get to know each of our students by first name, which is good for some students and not good for others, depending on if they show up to class and have a positive attitude. But we're really committed to helping um, each of our students um, be successful in any way we can, we can help. Um, we also are located 13 miles away from Voyagers National Park too, so that offers a lot of outdoor activities all year round for our students to participate in. Um, so we encourage all students to apply. Um, you can apply online at rainyriver.edu. There's a tab that says apply now in the top right corner. Um, otherwise, feel free to contact me directly and my contact information is on this slide here. Um, so like I said, my name is Molly and I'm a recruiter on campus. So I assist all of our new students through the admissions process. Um, otherwise, I encourage you to check out our website or our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to learn more about Rainy. All right, and then we will, uh, next up here we have Rep from University of San Diego. All right, hello everyone, welcome. My name is Jackie Burkett. I'm a senior admission counselor at the University of San Diego. Also a very proud alumna, uh, but we are a private Catholic university. So we were founded in 1949 by the Diocese of San Diego and the Sisters of the Sacred Heart. 
And one of our founders, Mother Rosalie Hill, she had this idea that if we built a beautiful campus, it would draw people here. On campus, our students would find truth, within truth find goodness, and be able to spread that goodness around the world. Uh, so beauty, truth, and goodness is really what USD is all about, and it still runs with us today as we are the number six most beautiful campus in the nation, thanks to the Princeton Review. Uh, but we do have about 5,900 undergraduates, about 2,600 grad and law students, so we are considered a mid-sized university. About 48% of our students come from out of state, uh, about 10% are international, so that does leave the rest Californians. 38% of our students identify as being students of color, and only about 40% of our students identify as Catholic. So we really do have students coming from all across the globe, all different walks of life, and that is something that we celebrate on our campus. Uh, we have our Center for Inclusion and Diversity, as well as our United Front Multicultural Center, which houses 33 different multicultural clubs and organizations. We also have the Commons, which houses our Women's Commons, our LGBTQ and Allies Commons, our Black Student Resource Commons, and that United Front Multicultural Center. And of course, the whole purpose of going off to college is to receive an education, and we believe in the liberal arts at USD. So you're not just going to be studying courses within your major, but courses within everything else as well, from um, fine arts, math, science, history, philosophy. And now we do have 42 different majors to choose from, about 56 different minors. We have a wonderful school of business with a great reputation, awesome school of engineering, uh, which is only about seven years old and already 13th in the nation for undergraduate engineering programs. And of course, being a liberal arts university, we have our College of Arts and Sciences, which houses majors like biology, psychology, to political science and theater arts. And we don't wanna limit our students in what you wanna study, what you want to participate in. So try to think of all of our majors and minors as a buffet and you get to go through and pick and choose what you want to put on your plate. And we wanna make sure that all of our students have one-on-one -on -one opportunities with professors. So we cap our classes at 40. So you will never have more than 40 students in any of your classes, even at the basic English 121 level. But we want our students to really get involved outside of the classroom. So we have over 180 different clubs and organizations to get involved in. Everything from our accounting society to our skydiving club, whatever you could possibly think of in between. Uh, we're also home to 17 NCAA Division I sports. We play in the West Coast Conference, except for football. We're 1AA, we play in the Pioneer League. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of Torero pride on our campus. And of course, we also live in San Diego. So that has a lot to do with what our students do outside of the classroom. We're 15 minutes north of downtown, 15 minutes south of La Jolla, most importantly, 10 minutes away from the beaches. So our students enjoy getting off campus and taking full advantage of the awesome city that we live in. And things that kind of make USD unique is that we are one of only 45 changemaker campuses in the world designated because of what we do outside the classroom. Our Torero community is committed to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, and global citizenship as well. So our students do simple things like fundraising to send number two pencils to third world countries. Something as big as totally completely developing and building an irrigation system for a village in Sudan. So we want our students to think about not only how they're gonna have an impact at USD, but how are they going to impact the world? So we're also consistently ranked top 10 in the nation for our study abroad participation. We have over 80 different programs, 30 different, or 30 different countries, six different continents. So pretty much you name it, we go there. And lots of opportunities to study abroad and possibly study abroad more than once and still graduate in four years. Um, I hope this got you a little bit excited about USD. As I mentioned, I am your admission counselor. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help walk you through the admissions process and answer any questions that you all may have. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. And last but certainly not least, we will have University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Hi everyone, my name is Christina Conroy. Um, I am, oops, 
open my camera up, sorry. My name is Christina Conroy. I'm an admissions advisor here at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, located in um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A little bit about us, where we're located. We are about five minutes from Lake Michigan. Obviously, we're located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're about 90 minutes north of Chicago. We're about a um, little, little under five hours from the Twin Cities. Um, our campus is about 15 minutes from downtown Milwaukee. Um, we're in more of a residential neighborhood. That's kind of where our campus is located and situated. Um, but we're still very much in the city, still very easy for our students to get throughout the city of Milwaukee. We have um, our Milwaukee County Transit bus system that comes to campus and students can ride that for free with the use of their student ID. So you can still get around the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee County pretty easily um, and pretty quickly for our students. A little bit about our students. We are the most diverse school in the UW system. We also are the most transfer, uh, popular transfer destination in the UW system as well. So we have students that are not only coming in from high school, but that are also transferring in um, from other two or four year universities um, throughout the state, as well as surrounding states. Um, we have students from all 50 states, 80 plus countries, and we currently have about 19,000 undergraduate bachelor degree seeking students enrolled at UWM. Um, and our faculty to, faculty to student ratio is about 19 to one. Um, and our classes get a lot smaller and smaller, um, the farther and farther you get along with your major the smaller and smaller classes will be. Um, our larger classes, students will typically only have to take a couple of those larger lecture classes. Um, and those are actually going to have SI sessions, um, breakout sessions outside of class time. So you'll still get sort of that like smaller face-to-face one-on-one connection um, for your larger lecture classes. And then, like I said, as you get farther with your major, they get a lot smaller. We have about 600 students that study abroad annually. Um, and these programs are really gonna range and vary depending on where you wanna go and how long um, you wanna be gone. Study abroad office typically will put on fairs each semester throughout the school year as well. Um, so students can attend that and see all of these different programs. In terms of um, outside classroom activities, we are a top tier research university. So we, we are an R1 status research institution. So we have a lot of undergraduate research opportunities in every single academic area on campus. This screen here kind of just gives you a tiny little snapshot of all the different um, sort of undergraduate research opportunities we have for our students. Um, there's only about 135 um, schools in the country with this R1 status, and there's only two in the state of Wisconsin, that's Austin UW Madison. So if that's something you're interested in, lots and lots of things um, for our students to get involved with. In terms of other academics, um, we have students doing internships, co-ops, because we're in the city of Milwaukee, the majority of the Fortune 500 companies that are present in Wisconsin are actually, majority are located in Milwaukee. So we have a lot of students that are able to do these internships throughout the school year, um, as well as over the summer. Um, and you can also see here, you know, clinical, student teaching, field work, um, those kinds of things. Also, large, large variety um, students, for example, if you're interested in nursing, right, you have to do a clinical um, each semester your last two years. And being in the city of Milwaukee, students get a variety of different areas and experiences um, because we're in such a large city and have so many of these opportunities. Um, we are D1, so we have 15 men's and women's D1 athletic teams. Um, and then we also do have over 300 student organizations that our students can get involved with. Um, and these really range and vary depending on what you're interested in. But we do have involvement fairs that happen at the beginning of each semester that students can attend. Um, that's where all of our student organizations will be at. So students can kind of um, walk around at that fair, see all the student organizations that are present, talk to them and kind of get a sense of like what's available on campus and how they can get more involved and participate in those um, sort of different student organizations and get a little bit more involved outside of the classroom. In um, terms of scholarships, I just wanna highlight our Chancellor's and Merit Scholarships. Um, so these are automatic for incoming freshmen. So you can kind of see the breakdown here um, for students. These are, what's really nice about these is they're automatically applied. So if you, you know, have this GPA when you apply, it's kind of something that's automatic. The rest of our scholarship applications are available through our portal and students can apply for those. Um, but this specific chancellor one is automatic and you do not have to apply for it um, as long as you qualify for it. It's kind of awarded to you after you're accepted. Um, a little bit about our application timeline, you can kind of see here, um, sort of the highlights, um, August 1st 
is when our applications open for the fall. Um, so if you know you're not a senior yet this year, just know that August 1st is when it's open every year. Priority deadline for fall 2021 is March 1st. However, we are still accepting applications. So if you're interested in fall 2021 and you haven't applied yet, there's still time. We do not have an application fee, so students have no fee. Um, and again, we do not require ACT or SAT scores either. So we'll really just need that application um, as well as your official high school transcripts sent to us. And then May 1st is kind of confirmation um, deposit deadlines and things like that. I also do want to point out on the side um, some visit opportunities to um, connect with us at UWM. We are doing in-person tours. We just resumed these last week. Um, so if you'd like, you can come to campus and do an in-person tour. We still do have virtual tours available for students who aren't able um, or not comfortable to come to campus. So um, if you just go to uwm.edu slash visit UWM, all of our face-to-face -face and virtual visit opportunities um, will be there. Otherwise, thank you um, so much. And I will put my contact information in the chat. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. All right. So that is <clears throat> the conclusion of the presentation part. So uh, this time I'll kind of open it up to our students. If you have any uh, additional questions that you may want to ask, uh, either an individual school or just a general question, you can put that in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and then someone from um, that university will respond. So I will kind of just keep the room open for the next few minutes and allow for questions to come in if our uh, university reps want to kind of just hang out for a few minutes and then we will wrap up tonight's event uh, for this portion. So just a reminder to the students that there is uh, another section. So if that is of interest to you, uh, please register for any of those and then once you exit out of this uh, screen, you will we'll be asked to submit a feedback form. It's just three quick questions. We would appreciate if you would give us that uh, information. So we will uh, see if we have any questions and if not, we can wrap it up here. All right, I will uh, wrap it up. I'll conclude this, this portion of the event. So a reminder, there is one more and then there's another event tomorrow. So if you're interested in those, uh, please register to attend any of those and uh, be sure to reach out to your admissions counselor um, if you have any additional questions. All right, thanks everyone, we appreciate it. Oh, wait, we have uh, one more in here. So uh, Pacific University, if you want to kind of just hang out for a minute. And then everyone else, I, I wish you uh, safe and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. Perfect. So the question was, do we have a marine biology major? Uh, we have a biology major with a marine biology focus. So you're still going to end up with a biology degree, but it will have a focus in marine bio. Um, obviously, being close to the coast is super helpful on that as well as the fact that we actually have a 400 gallon saltwater tide pool aquarium on campus. So unlike normal aquariums where the water sits there and fish swim through it, ours actually goes up and down throughout the day. So it's actually an entire tide pool with crabs and starfish and fish right on our campus to be able to bring some of that research to us. And uh, if you are interested in marine biology, uh, you can go on YouTube and type in shrimp on a treadmill. Um, so David Skolnick is actually our lead marine biology researcher and he actually went viral a few years ago with his research he did because he actually built little tiny treadmills for shrimp. And so it explains what the research is, but it's a really fun video to go watch. All right, I think that wraps it up. Uh, 
Yeah, we are good. All right, have a great night there. Thanks.